There's perhaps no serial killer in modern history more fascinatingly elusive than the Zodiac, who between December 1968 and October 1969 is confirmed to have killed five people in the San Francisco Bay Area, while Zodiac himself claimed to have killed 37 people in total. Now, here we are over 50 years later, and the identity of Zodiac remains unconfirmed, despite there being plenty of prime suspects over the decades. But we may just now be on the cusp of finally unearthing the mystery behind this most infamous figure. Now, there's a book that came out this past February from Jarrett Kobeck, How to Find Zodiac. And in that, Kobeck positions a Vallejo resident by the name of Paul Dewar, who passed away in 2007, as being the person behind the Zodiac killer. While all the evidence is entirely circumstantial, it collectively paints quite the persuasive account of Dewar's possible guilt. So let's get into it. I'm Andrew from What Culture, and here's 10 reasons why the Zodiac Killer may have finally been revealed. Number 10. Paul Dewar mostly matches the physical description of the Zodiac Killer. Now, the most immediate link between Dewar and the Zodiac Killer, he consistently matches the physical descriptions made of Zodiac by survivors and eyewitnesses from over the years. Now, Dewar was 42 years of age in 1969 when Zodiac was said to be anywhere from 35 to 45 years of age. He was the equivalent height, similarly sported a crew cut and looked not dissimilar to the famous composite sketch of the Zodiac killer made by police officers. While the photo of a young Paul Dewar shows him without glasses and sporting a beard, according to his own daughter Gloria, he periodically wore glasses throughout his life and also switched between facial hair and clean shaven styles. Now, Although Doe's weight yo-yoed throughout the 1970s, he indeed had the same stocky build that was used to describe the Zodiac at the time his crimes were perpetrated. While Doe largely matching Zodiac's apparent physical attributes doesn't alone make him a prime suspect, when tied together with the rest of Kovic's findings, it certainly adds fuel to the fire. Number 9. The Incredibly Similar Writing Style now, Zodiac is famed for writing torting letters and cards to regional California newspapers, and Paul Doer himself had a penchant for writing letters to his favorite zines, and also for publishing his own zine. Now, due to many of the zines being digitized online, Kobeck has been able to track a trove of Doer's written contributions, which bear marked similarities to Zodiac both in terms of content and in terms of writing style. He's written letters making reference to slavery, something Zodiac also wrote about as part of his apparent motive, and also penned a letter to the SF Examiner without a street address, just as Zodiac famously did. They also both wrote about something as esoteric as magnetic poles. Furthermore, an anonymous letter written to one of Dora's favorite zines, and believed to have been written by him himself, bears many superficial hallmarks of Zodiac's writing style, such as including seemingly intentional spelling mistakes and signing off with a symbol as a signature. Like Zodiac, Doa also enjoyed writing lists, used an ampersand instead of an AND, often wrote sentences in all caps except for lowercase i's, and occasionally used a circle to dot lowercase i's and punctuate sentences. This is without getting into recurring language, which could be seen in both Doa and Zodiac's writings, which, while hardly a smoking gun in its own right, simply illustrates further shared characteristics between the two. The evidence is mounting up. Number eight, cryptography and ciphers. Here's where the coincidences really start piling up now, and it becomes even more difficult to discount Paul Doer as anything less than an incredibly compelling and serious Zodiac suspect. One of Zodiac's defining traits involved writing cryptograms and ciphers to newspapers containing coded messages. Uh, and of the four he sent out over the years, only two were ever sold, and that's now, 50 years later. So. Only only two were sold. This guy was clearly good at what he did. Uh, Doa was also interested in cryptography, though, to the extent that he even published a cipher in his own Tolkien zine from back in the day called Hobbitalia. Uh, and that was just three days after Zodiac sent out his famous Z13 cipher. Considering that cryptography is quite the niche interest, it's a majorly compounding piece of circumstantial evidence in tandem with everything else discovered by Kobeck in his book. Number seven. Paul Doer wrote a formula for a bomb very much the same as Zodiac. Now, Zodiac famously sent a letter to the San Francisco Chronicle on November the 9th, 1969, threatening to bomb a bus. That letter included a list of the items one would use to construct uh, such an explosive device. In Doer's own zine, Pioneer, 
he included a similar formula for building a bomb, also stating that it would need to be kept dry, which is what Zodiac had said. Uh, now, one similarity as well between the two is that Zodiac's letter and Doe's writing in his, his zine, Pioneer, both made sure to not make mention of the starter mechanism. So it gave you all the information, all the ingredients as you were to make a bomb, but didn't give you the vital piece of information on how to explode that bomb. In the very least, this confirms that Paul Doer had knowledge of explosive materials, not unlike the Zodiac Killer. Number six, Paul Doer was a role play fanatic. Now, Paul Doer apparently had a fondness for role play events, regularly attending Renaissance festivals in particular. Why is this important? For one, it would plausibly explain why Paul Doer could have an executioner's hood as worn by Zodiac when he attacked Brian Hartnell and killed Cecilia Shepard at Lake Berryessa in his possession if he was ever questioned about it. Would that be an item that could be a part of a historical reenactment, one of these festivals? More curiously, there was in fact a renaissance fair happening in the San Francisco Bay Area the very same day that Zodiac struck at Lake Berryessa. Though, again, highly circumstantial, it's absolutely plausible that Doa attended the fair, even in the very same or similar executioner garb, before driving the approximately two hours to Lake Berryessa and carrying out the attacks there. Number five, a history of violence. Crucially, Paul Doa has a history of violence that further posits him as a potential suspect of being the Zodiac Killer, or in the very least, suggests him capable of heinous acts such as murder. For starters, in a 1974 letter to the editor of his favourite zine, Green Egg, Doa straight up implied that he's killed people, and in his own zine, Pioneer again, stated the only good enemy is a dead enemy. Furthermore, Doa was reportedly discharged from the military after a year's service for attempting to shove a fork down someone's throat. And Doa's daughter, Gloria, has corroborated that her father was a violent man throughout his life with a history of abusing her and other family members. A man being violent doesn't immediately peg him as a serial killer, yet his not so cryptic suggestion in writing that he has killed someone certainly raises some major red flags. Number four, the similar choice of weaponry. Even beyond the fact that Paul Doer laid out the design for a bomb like that of the Zodiac Killer, he also had other weapon-related preferences in common with the killer. For one, a picture of Doer in role-playing get-up sees him touting a knife and scabbard similar to those said to be worn by Zodiac during the Lake Berryessa attack. Furthermore, Zodiac's knife was described as looking homemade. Added to that, in a 1969 letter to another zine, Tight Beam, Paul Doa wrote about casting his own metal blade, as in making his own weaponry, his own knives. Yet the similarity extends beyond blades to guns also. Zodiac wrote in one of his letters that he acquired his unregistered guns either through the mail or by buying them out of state. In a zine, yet again, Paul Dora massively decried the intrusiveness of gun registration and even made a classified ad of where he wished to trade his own wares for guns. Number three, Paul Dora wrote a serial killer magazine but ignored Zodiac. Paul Doer also made references to serial killers in his own writing. In both a 1970 letter to Pioneer and another letter in 1979, Doer mentions crimes which were widely reported as Zodiac copycat murders, yet never once references Zodiac himself. So he talks about the copycat kills, but never in conjunction or reference in any form or fashion Zodiac, the Zodiac killer. But it gets better. Doa also registered himself as an investigator and started his own zine to dedicated to serial killers. Yet curiously, he never mentioned the Zodiac again, despite having spent so much of his own adult life in the Northern California region where Zodiac struck. Doesn't that seem rather odd that someone who poor Doa would have likely been acutely aware of as an adult doesn't even get a passing mention in his zine about serial killers? Unless, of course, he didn't want to risk drawing any attention towards himself as a suspect. Number two, all the assorted circumstantial evidence. While the previous entries cover the most compelling evidence linking Paul Doer to Zodiac, they're also just scratching the surface on everything Jarrett Coburg uncovered in his book. Uh, just to run through some of the other coincidences and similarities worth thinking about. One of Paul Doer's 1960s music zines was heavily inspired by Gilbert and Sullivan who were also referenced in at least three of Zodiac's letters. 
In later life, Paul Doyle was confirmed to own a sky blue 63 Chevy Nova, similar to the one seen at Lake Berryessa on the day of Zodiac's attack. Doer also drew diagrams in many of his zines, which look superficially similar to Zodiac's bus bomb drawings. Doer was on the mailing list of right-wing militia the Minutemen, who used a gun sight logo similar to Zodiac's. Also, they published the bomb formula reproduced by both Doer and Zodiac, and offered advice on how to send mail anonymously and acquire untraceable weaponry. Zodiac wore military-issued wingwalker boots, which Paul Doerr would have had easy access to because he spent decades at Vallejo's Mare Island naval base. The year after Zodiac used one-cent stamps to post a letter, Doerr suggested using one-cent stamps to spite the post office for raising their stamp costs. Zodiac was said to use a pencil flashlight as a gun sight in the dark, as was detailed in the magazine Popular Science that Paul Doerr collected. Zodiac referenced the Sierra Club in one of his postcards, as does Doerr in numerous issues of Pioneer. I mean, there's a, there's a lot here. Separately, these might be cute coincidences, but together, they form a fascinating picture of Paul Doerr as someone who should be considered at least a major person of interest in the Zodiac investigation. Number one, even Paul Doerr's daughter thinks he's the Zodiac killer. Now, obviously, this is a, a very touchy subject, but even Paul Doerr's own daughter, Gloria, agrees that her father was most likely the Zodiac killer, as detailed in a recent interview with LA Mag. Though Gloria stated that she doesn't want to believe Jarrett Kobeck's claims, as no child would, obviously, of course, she couldn't help but note the many, many similarities listed in his investigation. Furthermore, Gloria revealed that her father's abuse became violent enough that she moved out of the family home at the start of Christmas break, 1968, which would have been mere days at most before Zodiac claimed his first victim. Plus, many of Zodiac's murder spots were popular teen hangouts Gloria herself frequented, with LA Mag even floating the theory that Maybe Paul Doerr could have murdered Vallejo youths in an attempt to scare his straying daughter straight. <sighs> it's a tough one, but at the end of the interview, Gloria Alray says that she believes Kobeck's investigations to be correct and that her father was probably more than not the Zodiac killer. Now, this is a fascinating development in a case, as mentioned, that's uh, been going on for over 50 years now with who knows if and when we'll ever get a definitive answer, but I think the evidence here cannot be ignored. Now, I know this has all been a little different to what we would normally cover here at What Culture, but let us know how you think about this. Let us know how you feel about this. Let us know your comments, your theories, if you think the pull door could be, could have been the, the Zodiac killer. Uh, of course, be sure to like, subscribe, share, comment, and be sure to come and give us a follow on Twitter at What Culture. You can find myself, Andrew Pollard, at Culture Left Peg on the Twitter. Again, let us know your thoughts on all of this, and we'll see if this develops any further. But for now, you have a good day and I will see you soon.